it is the most freeing and liberating feeling anybody could give to themselves. When I have basically sat here for years, housebound. Maya Wynn, how did you find Carnivore? Well, to answer that accurately, I have to go back from the day dot. First of all, I'm 56 years of age. I wasn't always big. My appearance, for want of a better way of putting it, was okay up until the age of about five. Now, my mother, bless her heart, she was an opera singer. And at around about the age of five, her international career took off. But as her career took off, my weight just went <laughs> not a reflection on her as a parent or on my father as a parent. The situation was exactly how it was. So it's got to be stated that, you know, I've been battling this bulge for about 50 years it's a long time uh, so it became very clear early on in my mother's international career that traveling with mum and dad was just not feasible from an educational point of view so they did what any parent would possibly do in that situation and I was put into boarding school I had two boarding schools in England so um, of course, I walk in the front door of the boarding school and they're like, oh, my goodness, we've got to put her on a diet. So um, consequently, the result of uh, those diets in the boarding school, I cannot look at a rye vita. Ooh, ooh. Can't look at them. Lived on them for years. I'm like, no more rye vitas come into this house. So, um, so yes, I was always put on this diet. You know, the first boarding school, it was a fairly strict diet. It was very restrictive. Um, then later on down the track, while whilst at this boarding school, they put me on appetite suppressants. I must have been about eight, nine years old. And I thought nothing, I remember thinking nothing of it at the time because I figured that all of this was communicated with my parents and I just went with it you know um the medication was called ponderax pay caps i've since found out in the in the other end of my years here that apparently that's actually not on the market anymore because it was known to cause heart defects touch wood i don't have those so i'm grateful for that because i wasn't on them for long but when I did go home for a weekend, when I was, you know, eight or nine, mum saw me taking this little capsule. She said, excuse me, what's that? And so I told her. and She was furious. She said, I'm going to take one. She took one. And her mood was like, and so a letter to the uh, headmistress ensued. And I remember one of the lines from that letter. Um, it was, I took these tablets. And it made me feel like a cobra poised for the kill. That was how she put it. And it was definitely very apparent in how she was. So boarding school, boarding school, diets, diets, diets. Um, then we came out to Australia to live permanently in 1982. Uh, up until then, yes, there were diets. But, you know, there was also things like I did ballet, I did tap dancing, tennis, badminton, hockey, rounders. I was active. Um, when I came out here, I came out in the middle of the school term. They put me with a private tutor that I was doing really well with. They left me there, found out that it was legal to be with her for three hours per day every day. And so I finished my schooling with this private tutor. However the activities just stopped. So the weight piled on. Um, now in that time, let me see if I can do a tally of all the diets I've tried. Um, grapefruit diet, Scarsdale diet, 
uh jenny craig gloria marshall weight watchers um cabbage done the cabbage never again oh can't look at a cabbage rivetas and cabbage mm -mm. Mm -mm. no then so we'll cut forward a little bit because it was pretty much diet wise it was just more of the same until you know i had my second son and i found tony ferguson and that was my first real introduction into carbohydrates ketosis low carb that was really where that education started now i lost about 60 kilos on that thing and various centimeters to go with it however at 60 kilos one day i looked in the mirror and i did not recognize who it was that was looking back at me and it frightened the living daylights out of me i just headed for the hills because psychologically it did me in and I'm like nah and so all the weight went back on when I went on to another diet again you know my husband suggested why don't you go back on Tony Ferguson I'm like mm, no there's something out there I don't know what it is but there's something it led me to find the ketogenic diet and I think yes that was through a friend of mine who I've known for many, 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 many years. And he said to me, just get rid of all that other fluff, go on a ketogenic diet. So, so that's what I did. I managed to lose roughly about the same, same amount that I did on the Tony Ferguson diet. Um, Sorry, this was around when? This would have been, oh, golly. The ketogenic diet that I went on, I would say roughly about eight years ago, give or take, eight to ten years ago. Um, so I don't quite know what happened there. I think my mental health was just, I was then started to take medication for my mental health, for anxiety and depression, and something went awry. I did lose a lot of weight on the ketogenic diet. Can't deny that. Can't deny it. So we'll cut to October 2022. It would be impossible for me to have this conversation with you and with everyone without mentioning my darling Adrian. My husband has tried to get me out of this funk. My kids have tried to get me out of this funk for years. But it was Adrian that was literally the one that saved my life. His concern for me was that I had nothing for me. There was nothing in my life to inspire me. There was nothing in my life to get me moving. Um, my father had recorded absolutely every performance that my mother ever sang. I've got a pool table over there filled with cassettes. And he got me on the path of saving those cassettes. And in this year, in the year since, I've like been working on pushing through the, the mental block that I had. I shut down opera. I shut down the opera world. I, I shut down. I was basically sitting here waiting to die. As harsh as that sounds, that is the cold, hard truth. I was waiting to die. But I recall in conversations that we'd had since he gave it to me like it was, told me like it was, out of love and concern, he mentioned a friend that was a carnivore. It kind of registered, but not really. The only thing at the time that I remember registering with me was, the man eats just meat? What? How could you live off just me? It was like, I don't get it. So um, he mentioned it again a few months down the track. 
So I knew that coming into 2024 that I needed to do something. It wasn't in case of want. I needed to for me, not for anyone else. I'm not doing this for my husband. I'm not doing this for my kids. I'm doing it for myself. Every time I've got on a diet or a lifestyle change, it's always been for somebody else. And that is the biggest mistake you can make. You've got to do it for yourself. So I knew that something drastic had to change. But what? Thinking about the ketogenic diet, I'm like, yes, it works. It's great. But I'm not down for complicated. I want something simple. And so Adrian said again, he said, well, you know, there's always my friend, Carnival. So December last year, went onto YouTube and I typed in car Carnivore. <clears throat> the information was like, okay then. So I started diving in and I found Dr. Ken Berry Mwah to him if he ever sees this. Dr. Sean Baker, mwah if he ever sees this. Dr. Chaffee, mwah, mwah if he ever sees this. They were the first three that I found talking about what shocked me. The first thing that shocked me was that the food pyramid, there was no nutritionist involved in it at all, but it was invented by the food companies. I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Um, and then I started to find videos of people that have had success stories. There was one little lady who has a channel called Carnivorous Me. And even though she's younger, the pain that she had in her legs and all the other things that she had, I'm, I'm very, very lucky that I don't have autoimmune problems. My issues are leg pain. Oh, my God. Um, but I saw her latest video that she did an update on how much she's lost and how far she's come, and I'm like, couldn't believe it. It was at that point I was like, right, carnivore it is. Carnivore it is. And you're not going to get much simpler than carnivore. What's for dinner? Meat. What's for breakfast? Meat. What's for lunch? Meat. How many calories? Huh? Calories what? Eat till you're full. You're good. You're not going to get more simple than that. So that's what led me to finding carnivore. Well, congratulations on, on getting getting here. So when, when did you start? Monday, the 1st of January, 2024. That's oh, when I started. So you're three weeks in and yep. you, you sold on this? Oh, completely. Hmm. You'd be hard-pressed to get a vegetable into my gob now. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah, yeah, sign me up for a plate full of oxalates. I don't think so. No, thank you. Mm. No. <laughs> so, Sorry, lettuce? Whoa, whoa. Lettuce? No. <laughs> no, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what's happened in that time? I mean, three weeks is a How short window. Got? So, How long really? you got? I've got a page full. Wow. Oh, yeah. Page full. Right. So, here we go. Uh, the changes started on day four. I started to feel an ease in my knees on day four. Wait, what? <laughs> that was an eye opener. From that, I've had various things that have happened. I've had like um, my taste is changing. That's the first thing because one of the things that I changed was I found out that, you know, those sweetener tablets like Equal and, you know, the Coles little sweetener tablets, they have that nasty little filler in them called maltodextrin. And I'm like, bye-bye. So I went on to monk fruit. It's not the best, but it's certainly better than anything that's got 
a whole pile of maltodextrin in it. And I'm like, no, nah, that's goodbye. Took me about two weeks to get accustomed to the taste of that. It was well worth the effort. Now, I, I mean, initially I was having like four teaspoons. Now I'm just down to two. And I can see a time when it's going to be one. And maybe in the future, none. But the coffee's not going anywhere. I am not giving up my coffee and my little bit of cream. The cream is practically the only carbohydrates I am consuming. And I'm happy to sacrifice everything else, but not my coffee. Mm -mm. So the fog is lifting. I have felt the fog lifting in the last week. So that's week three. Um, my sense of taste is changing. I take a supplement at night. Um, it's called Bioceuticals Ultra Muscle Ease Night. It's a magnesium supplement because I have quite possibly the worst restless leg syndrome you could possibly hope to have. Uh, I could have a football match on my own if I don't take this. I'm just saying. But I have now found that I'm going to have to rethink what I do for magnesium in the future because that is now so sweet. I can barely handle it. So the taste has changed. My mental health is definitely changing in this last week, the third week. Um, I've found that when things come my way that are quite stressful, I'm not sort of like, oh, okay, so we'll take some of the fog that I've got and we'll just pop the fog, fog just over that little problem there and we can just sort of distance ourselves from the fog a bit, you know, just, yeah. We'll leave that over there. It's because the fog has lifted and the mental health has changed. I'm having to relearn how to navigate these things. I, I mean, I used to know how to do them, but because it's been such a long time that I've had this fog and my mental health has been so woeful for such a long time, I have to relearn how to navigate the ebbs and flows of outrageous fortune. So it's just it's just one of those things that you have to learn. Um, one of the things that really blew my mind this third week was when I was taking my husband to the hospital or to the doctors, I have long sighted ish long, I'm long sighted and I'm short sighted. Um, I put that down to the fact, I mean, I was pregnant and pregnancy does things to a woman's body it sucks the very vitamins out of you but anyway um so i put it down to just that and just lived with it so i've always had these for close work and i've had prescription sunglasses for distance and prescription normal glasses for when i'm driving at night now case in point i have not been able to drive at night for ages because the eyesight's been woeful even with the glasses on. But anyway, um, so I just cut out nighttime driving. But this week when I went and took my doctor to, sorry, took my husband to the doctor, I put on my prescription sunglasses on and I'm driving there and I'm like, my husband, even in the midst of his pain, he said, what's going on? What's wrong? What's wrong? And I said, I took him off in the car and I said, I don't know how this is a thing, but I can see better without my prescription sunglasses on. And he said, do you think that has anything to do with carnivore? I said, no idea. I said, I guess it's back to YouTube and Google. I said, because I, I thought I was imagining it. He gave me his Ray-Bans to wear while I was driving. But, yeah, the long-distance sight is getting better. Apparently that's a thing. A carnival thing. Not going to question it. Just going to say thank you. <laughs> just thank you very much. Um, you know, we have things now for dinner like meat plates, and you know, the pain in my body is less and less every day. Um, after about five days I started doing stand up sit downs where I'm sitting now just to get moving uh, I'm now up to eight of those every night regardless like I did have some pain having to, I did a lot of driving this week 
And it was to be expected with that much increased movement for me that there would be some pain involved. And case in point, if what Dr. Chaffee says there shouldn't be, um, the fact is that at the moment, I did have some residual back pain and the legs were like, oh, I had a night where I'm like, oh, my God, this feels like three weeks ago. No. But by the next morning, that was lifting. It was healing quite quickly. So but even that night that I had all that pain, I still did those sit up, sit downs. I made a point. Of not, no, I can't let this win. I've just got to push through, got to push through. So, yeah. Wow, that that's awesome. And um, you're feeling better. You're obviously you're eating better. You're feeling better. You're handling stress better. Things are improving. Yeah. Um, and it's only three weeks in. Only so three weeks. What yeah. What was the first few days like for you? Were you like, you know? Like, I need to eat, I need to eat some regular food. No, nope. I'm still waiting for keto flu. Mm -hmm. I'm in ketosis, but the difference between this time and all the other times when I was going through it and that awful keto flu, it's just awful. For me, it presents like I've got a cold, you know, and um, the only difference is that this time, I'm very mindful of my electrolytes. So all those people on YouTube about electrolytes and keto flu, they cannot be wrong because, I mean, I'll show you. I've got one of these in the kitchen and one of these beside me. So I've got the sodium and the potassium there. I drink these because all those Pepsi drinks are gone. All the aspartame drinks, I put ice in a cup. Sprinkle a little bit of that salt. This is lime flavor. The lime flavor with the salt, mwah, it's it's beautiful. It's really great. So, you know, yeah, like I said, still waiting for keto flu. Haven't had it yet. I'm really lucky this time. So I am in ketosis. I know I am. I've got ketone strips. I know they're only a guide, but when the guide is telling you that you're right towards the end of the scale of like, yeah, you're in ketosis, then, you know, you must be onto something. Yeah, so how how are you eating day to day? What's the three weeks like been? Well, um, there have been some mornings when I've gotten up and I've like, I'm not hungry. I'm going to be happy with my coffee and my water. And that has seen me through until 7.30ish. I'm like, and then I'm like, okay, yeah, now I'm hungry. I could eat. And then it's just this meat. Not a lot. Um, but, you know, I, who'd ever thought you could just live on one meal a day? But you can. It's quite bizarre. You don't think you can. If you're going to, okay, if you're going to eat all the other rubbish, then no, you won't be able to. I'm just saying. Um, but if you're going to eat a plate full of meat for your dinner, chances are if you've got the fats right and the protein right, you're going to be satiated until the next day, well and truly, well and truly. So, you know, I've had things like there have been mornings when I've woken up where I just want a couple of eggs and just a scram scrambled eggs. That's all I've really wanted. Sometimes I've added bacon to it. Um, some mornings I've been having, um, little sort of one, one inch by one inch cubes of pork belly that's been salted and I shove it in the air fryer. Couple of those, I'm good for the rest of the day. Um, and dinners can be anything from beef mince patties with bacon. And like last night, for instance, I had two beef mince patties, butter on the top. Who... Who here isn't happy that they've got an excuse to put butter on everything? Come on now. I'm just saying. Nobody can say anything. Oh, you put too much butter on your toast. Like, yeah, and I don't have toast anymore. 
But now my husband can't say anything because I'm putting butter on everything. And he's like, mm. so, yeah, I'm like, bite me. <laughs> but, you know, so I had the two uh, hamburger patties and dab of butter on each of those. I made a two-egg scrambled egg and put that on top. There was also um, four pork bellies on the side, and that was my dinner. I couldn't finish it. I was full. I mean, there was about that much of a patty that was left. I couldn't eat it all. I was full before I got to the end. Me, I was full before I got to the end of a meal. What? But, yeah. It, it, it's awesome. So... <laughs> One thing I want to ask you about is, um, especially because this is going to be kind of, I guess it's probably fresh in your mind, ha having only been mm -hmm. on this three weeks. So yep. the feeling of satiation, it, in my opinion, the feeling of satiation when you're on a regular diet versus when you're on carnivore is uh, totally different. Oh, completely. Agree? Oh, completely. Completely. It's, um, it's for me, it's a case of, I don't know, all that other rubbish, let's just call it rubbish for the sake of a word, you can feel that stuff leaving your stomach. I could. The difference with me eating a plate full of meat is that not only are you full, but you can feel it staying in the stomach long enough to be digested properly without all the other extra stuff that... cut. To me now, all that other stuff that, you know, have your balanced diet of three veggie serves per day and your nuts and whole grains, that to me is just noise. And to me, now that I've removed that noise from my digestive system, my stomach can now do and my digestive system can now do exactly what it was designed to do. And at the end of the day, if it was good enough for a caveman, it's good enough for me. Nice. So when um, when I was eating a regular diet before, I would have I'd get up and I'd have breakfast as soon as I could, and then after breakfast, I'd be thinking about, well, what am I going to have for a snack at ten yep. o'clock? Then after the snack, what am I going thinking... to have for lunch? Yep. So. Was that your eating Your eating patterns were similar? I had that, yeah. It, it's amazing how attuned to that you become when you start carnivore because you get very quickly aware of, like, I'm not hungry. Eh, just carry on, do what you're doing. Your body, because you've removed that noise, your body will tell you. When you are re-eating all that other noise, your brain is immediately looking for that next meal. And that's exactly what I was like. I was exactly like that. I don't even think about it. I let my body tell me, okay, you're hungry now. Go eat, girl. It tells you. So in that respect, you get a lot of time back, right? Because you're not constantly you're not constantly ruminating about food, right? Uh, yeah, you do. You get a lot of time. You can do things. Um, like, uh, I mean, I've got a hefty project coming my way with saving all these recordings of my mother um so there's that but now because of this last week that I've had going out and driving like I've re okay so I'm a bit of a nerd I'm going to admit it I've re-downloaded Pokemon Go okay so sue me um <laughs> I want to actually use that particular game for its intended use because I can see a time when I'm going to be walking around using that particular game because it's that type of game. Um, I've already said I've found a park in my area. I'm like, oh, Google Maps has shown me a nice picture of a bench that's not close to the road. It's a little fair distance from the road. I could make that. I could do that. So I've asked hubby, I want to go to the park next weekend. He's like, what? I said, I want to go out is what I'm saying. I want to go out. I'm actually starting to feel the need of I don't care what people think. I'm a big, big girl. I'm a big girl. We're talking 209 kilos here. 
like now. Um, when I started, I was a lot more. I've lost about 10.2 kilos, 10.7 kilos since starting. Um, but because the carnival diet has given me this ease in my legs, I'm now feeling, yeah, I, I, I want to go out just baby steps because I have been cruel to my body. So that means I've got to learn how to be kind to it. So baby steps it is. And I'm good with baby steps. Um, so, yeah, to be able to have the time to do those things and go out and have a life. And how good is it that you now feel like, I want to get out there. I want to get into is, the park. I want to move. It is the most freeing and liberating feeling anybody could give to themselves. When I have basically sat here for years, housebound, I mean, I'm still on this thing, walking stick. There's going to be a time where I won't need it and I'm going to be putting this on a wall as a decoration and a symbol because I think that's important. I need to do that. But the greatest gift you can give yourself is the freedom to live your life, whatever that yeah. means to you. Mm. Well said. Um, so <laughs> what are your kids thinking about this? What's family thinking about this? Three weeks, well, clarity, you're only eating I, meat. What's going on? Well, full clarity, my kids already think I'm mad, so that's nothing new. Um, so <laughs> this, is, look, this is what I'm like. What you see is exactly what you would get in real life. I don't put airs and graces on. I don't have time for it. So this last week specifically, there has been a shift in the food. So um, my husband has said, I know what I want for dinner. And I said, and what might that be? And he said, I just want a barbecue chicken. He said, I want a whole barbecue chicken to myself. I said, then you have a whole barbecue chicken to yourself. I said, and I'll bet you if you ask the kids if they want barbecue chicken for dinner, they'll say, oh, yeah, let's have it. They are changing as well. My son, my youngest son who started school, the school year, this morning, he sent me a message last night. He said to me, Mum, would it be okay if I had some pork belly for my breakfast? And I said, of course, love. He said, how many can I have? I said, well, choose yourself four decent little meaty pieces, cook them up, make sure you salt the rind, put it nice and crunchy. I said, the only thing I ask is that you don't waste it. He said, no, if I don't eat it, he said, I'll put it in a container and take it to school. So my kids are now starting to ask. My husband's already there. Um, I thought that mid last week that I would have to have a serious, hefty conversation with the whole family about, okay, dudes, we can't do this anymore and go off my tree about all sorts of things, but I honestly have not had to because the changes I have gone through the positive changes that I've gone through, they've seen it. So if my kids only listen to me once and it's because of this, I've done my job. Nice. Yeah. And so so your husband too is, is starting to follow along? Yeah, he is. He is. Nice. Um, my eldest attitude to carnivore is, yeah, stuff vegetables. I'm here for it. He's like... Well, you think about it. Okay, think about it. And it occurred to me in the first week, we're brought up to believe that, you know, babies, when they start to eat solid foods, got to have your three servings of veggies, you got to have your dairy, you got to have cheese, you got to have your protein, all these things that they say that is essential for a baby to grow, right? One struggle that just about every parent has had is that they put vegetables in front of their babies and the babies go, mm. 
don't believe me, go to YouTube. There's plenty of them. Now, toddlers have had an aversion to veggies for as long as I can remember without any knowledge whatsoever and practically no way to communicate it except their instinct. They've been turning their nose up at veggies for years. Meanwhile, parents have been going, oh, my baby's a finicky eater. No, he's not. Just give him a piece of meat. Give him a piece of meat. Get rid of the bloody veggies. Give him a piece of meat. And if I'd have known then what I know now, I'd have just cut up steak for them. Here you go. Knock yourself out. It's Kids have been trying to tell us for years. That's right. I, it, it, it's it's crazy, right? We're like, oh, what's going to happen? They're they're well, yeah. not eating. They're not eating the lettuce. They're not eating. Them. The... I was one of them. Oh my god, my child's not eating vegetables. Oh, oh god, the whole world's going to fall apart. Guess what? It won't. Hmm. Goodness gracious no. me. <laughs> so, um, for the uninitiated, for someone who is you know, they're on the diet treadmill like everyone else. They've tried yeah. every diet. They're frustrated. They might be watching now and thinking, okay, well, what's this carnivore thing? But this all sounds like witchcraft and magic. You know, how can you how can you seriously only have one meal a day, not feel like you want to have a snack? Not, I, I can't go 10 minutes without a snack. Like, what is this? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. How how could you explain the differences to them? Like, what's the difference in the feeling inside that you have? The first feeling is that it very quickly dawns on you that you're doing something right for yourself. You're do and by yourself, I mean right across the board. You're doing something good for your digestive system. You're doing something good for your mental health. You're doing something good for your body, the nerves, the muscles, everything. And if anybody is on the fence about carnivore, I'd say give it two weeks. Give it a good college try for two weeks. And in that two weeks, listen to your body and it will tell you everything you need to know because it's going to scream at you because mine did. Because you've removed all the noise. That's It's as yeah. simple as that. Very nice. Um, so, Maya, when... Could you, you have a YouTube channel, right? Could you talk a little I bit do. about your channel, please? Sure. I mean, it's, it's only, I only started it. Like I did a video uh, towards the end of last year saying, why am I going on carnivore? And then something strange that happened on Christmas day. Was the, there was some funny things that happened on Christmas day because all I really wanted was the meat. So <laughs> that's all I had. But um the channel itself, it's called The Carnivore Odyssey because let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, it is quite a journey. Um, the reason why I started the channel was warts and all, good times, bad times, something as significant as this needs to be documented. I mean, I know that I'm in a sea of people who are vlogging this journey of theirs with Carnival. I know that. But I feel the need to add to that pool so that it helps to create awareness because I don't know how that's going to happen, but the medical doctors, they've got to change how they're thinking they just have to. And it is hard to relearn and rethink and undo everything you've been brought up to think. But it, it dawns on you real quick, it really, really does. And I, I just felt that I needed to document that journey the best way that I can so that people can see 
me going through because everybody's journey is different. The fact that there is a journey is the same thing. Everybody's journey is different. That's the only variable is that everyone is different. I wanted to put my journey up there from my point of view, from what I'm doing, from what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, so that there's a documentation for, and you just don't know. Like I came across Carnivorous Me and that was the turning point for me that went made me go, that's it, carnival, end of story, carnival. You just don't know. Somebody might come across my my video and go that and say the same thing. It could be the pivotal moment in them making that decision. And just try it two weeks. Just give yourself two weeks of a good, solid try. Do your research. Look up lectins and oxalates. Be mindful of your electrolytes and just go. Just do it. Two weeks. Very so nice. that's what I want to document. Yeah. So, Maya Wynn, um, one thing I'd really, um, I'd really like to do um, is perhaps have you back on in maybe three months and just see how you're going. I would going. love to. I would be honoured to come back and talk to you. I would. That would be I'd awesome. Love that. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. So, you're thank welcome. you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, it was wonderful. It was a blast. Thank you for having me on. The, I, I'm honoured to be here to 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 share whatever I can about this amazing journey. It is an amazing, it's an eye opener. It is an eye opener. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs>